Today I am answering the following question. Chris, could you please do a video using the control room in Cubase Pro? I have some questions regarding whether or not you keep it in use all the time and run your monitors through it when mixing. At this time, I'm only using it for tracking, but not sure how is the best way to use it. Thank you. All right then, so I'm gonna share you how I use the control room in Cubase Pro. Hey, what's going on, my friend? Chris here from Mixdown Online. I hope you're doing well. Now, we're gonna talk about the control room in Cubase. It's a very cool tool if you have Cubase Pro. Now, this is not available on other versions of Cubase like Cubase Artist or Elements, but only on the Pro version of Cubase. Now, before we go into the video, if you're new here on the channel, feel free to subscribe to the channel and to click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. And for all of you, share and like this video if you think that the video is helpful. All right, so let's jump in Cubase and talk about the control room. Now, the control room is not something that is that can be useful for everyone. You know, if you're a um, home musician and you just record yourself and you never work with anyone else than yourself, maybe the control room is not a tool that can help you out, you know? But for someone else, the control room can be a very nice tool to work with. And this is actually my case. I actually work with the control room in Cubase Pro all the time, so it's always on. So first, let's go in, click on F4 to get into the audio connections window and click at the far right on control room. And this is what we get. Now, this is how mine is set up. I use only one output for my main monitor. Even if I have three different pairs of monitors, I'm gonna to explain to you why uh, later. Then I have one QMix set up. I'm gonna to explain to you what a QMix is. And I also use it for talkback. I love to use the talkback microphone within Cubase. And I'm gonna to explain to you why and how I use the talkback in Cubase. And also I'm gonna share with you a very cool tip on how you can use a MIDI controller to control the talkback in the control room, so stay tuned. Now, first of all, we need to activate the control room if you wanna use it. So you have to make sure that control room is enabled. And then you'll see that the output, the main outputs of your audio connections is gonna be disconnected. The minute you're gonna, you're gonna assign uh, your outputs directly into the control room. So I'm gonna go back to the control room and I have monitor one, which is my main output that will feed my monitors. And those are um, routed to output one and two. So that's why if I click on outputs on the audio connections window, I have nothing. I have one master out, it's there, it exists, but it's routed nowhere. And this is normal because the control room will take care of that main output to feed my speakers. Now you can add up to four outputs in the control room. So let's create a second one. And this one is gonna be called monitor two. I'm gonna click on okay. I'm gonna leave this one on routed. I'm not gonna assign it to any outputs. It's just for uh, an example for this video. And I'm gonna close that audio connections window and I'm gonna go on the control room on the right zone of my project window in Cubase. Okay, so now if I look at the right side, I have my main section here. This is the most important section of the control room. This is where you'll, you'll be able to to control the main volume of the control room and also the, the, the volume of the click track and so on, okay? Um, now, um, one of the biggest reason why I love to use the control room, it's simply because it's gonna bypass my main master as far as the answer goes. And the reason is very simple. If you look at the second tab at the bottom right here, it's called inserts. If you click there, you can actually insert some plugins in that section that will affect the entire output of your main monitor out. Um, so in my case, I have Sonarworks Reference 4. I have two versions of that the same plugin because I, 
Uh, I run that plugin on two different set of speakers. Um, I have my focals, and I'm using this, uh, the first version of Sonarworks for my focals. And when I switch on my Kali audio speakers, I'm going to use the second one just because the, um, the EQ reading is not quite the same. Um, now, if you don't know about what Sonarworks Reference 4 is, I made a video a while back. I'm going to leave the link on top. Basically, what the Reference 4 will do is to analyze your room and give you a better EQ curve and flatter response out of your speakers. So that's why I have two different versions of Reference 4 on this as an insert for my main output. Now you could use that type of plugin directly on your stereo out, but the disadvantage of doing so is if you bounce your mix and you forget to bypass that plugin, the effect of that plugin, that EQ curve that uh, Reference 4 applies is gonna be bounced with your mix. And this is something that you don't wanna do. You. It's going to be chaos. It's going to. It's not going to sound very good. So that's why by inserting that plugin within the control room, it's only going to affect what comes out of my speakers and not what is coming out of my master outs when I bounce a mix. So this is one of the biggest reasons why I love to use the control room. Um, now you're going to ask me why do you use? Uh, why don't you use the control room to feed all of your different sets of monitors? I love to use a, um, a physical reference monitoring system that I have here, um, the Heritage Audio RAM 2000. I've made a review video uh, last week. You can check the link on top if you want to check it out. Now this this unit is going to take care of. Uh, of jumping from one set of speakers to the other uh, right here on my desk. Um, so that's why I'm only using one output out of the control room to get into this monitoring system that is a hardware right here on my desk. So I have a very easy reach to uh, jump from one set of speakers to the other. And also because I want to be able to do the same outside of Cubase. And the control room will only work when you're in Cubase, which is normal. Now, as an example, if we click here on monitors, this is where we are going to have uh, the inserts for those specific monitors. Now, my plugins are inserted into the main output um, that will affect all monitors. But if I have several monitors hooked up to the Cubase control room, what I can do is I can set one up for my focals, okay, and bring that plugin right here. And then if I click on B right here, okay, this is going to bring me to the second monitor. And there you go. Now it's empty. I'm just going to bring this one up right here. And that will affect my second pair of monitor when I switch. And to switch, you just click on A or B. If you have more monitors set up, you'll have C and D, okay, which is quite nice. But I don't need that because this is not the way I use it, but it's possible to do uh, to do use it this way. Okay, now another reason why I love to use the control room is the Q mixes is the ability to uh, send a mix to the person I'm recording. This is very practical when you do recording and especially when you're not recording yourself. This way I can send a custom mix to the person I'm recording by uh, routing that into a QMix. Now, if you want to um, access the QMix on your mix console, make sure you go right here on top on racks and make sure the QSends are activated, okay? And this way, you'll have a tab called Qs. And this is actually the amount of level that you can send to that QMix. Now, I only have one setup. I'm going to go back to my connections, audio connections window, back to control room, and I have QMix 1, Q1 basically. I can add up to four QMixes, stereo QMixes total. Now, those are routed into uh, output 5 and 6. Note that you'll need to have more than one output, one stereo output to use a Q mix. Okay, this is gonna it's gonna use another output other than your main output. So if you're using output one and two as your main monitor one output, you can use output three and four if you have four outputs out of your interface. Okay, so this way you'll be able to use the uh, the Q mix and send a a custom mix to the person you work with you are recording. Uh, so mine is set up to five and six. 
And right here, uh, this is basically what I am sending to that QMix. I, I'm only at the moment sending the master out. Um, and the reason is very simple. I am using that QMix for you guys. <laughs> okay, so this is the actual signal that I am recording into OBS, which is my screen recording software. This is what's uh, recording the uh, the capture of Cubase when I'm doing a, a video tutorial. And it's gonna capture my vocal also. I'm gonna talk to you about that uh, later. And also the music that comes out of Cubase. This is what I'm sending to Q1, the QMix 1. And this is uh, that that signal has been recorded directly into OBS. So if I click on play, you will hear the music out of Cubase. All right, so that's simple. So basically, if you're working with a uh, musician that you are recording, you can send that musician uh, its own custom mix. Uh, so for example, you could uh, you could do it in groups or on directly on individual tracks. So let's say um, I deactivate my main stereo out, and instead um, I activate the only the the keys. Uh, guitars, bass, and uh, no drums, okay? This is how it's gonna sound like. Okay, so I have a lot of control. I can actually just uh, even bring down some, uh, you know, some channels if I want to by just bringing down the amount of signal sent to the QMix. Uh, now, something to note is that you can send that signal pre or post fader. Meaning that, uh, for example, I'm just going to deactivate those, go back to my main uh, master out. Mine is actually set to pre-fader. And this is usually what I do on all channels. So this way I can customize a mix. And if I move any of my faders for my own mix, this will not affect the amount of signal sent to that Q mix. Okay, so this is wh why I'm going to use pre-fader. So this is something I make sure it's, uh, it's set up. Um, so if I right click, I can move that to post fader or pre fader. Okay. Um, so this is what it's going to sound like if I bring my fader down. Um, you notice that you will still hear the music. So this is very practical if you want to customize a mix. This is another reason why I love to use the control room. Uh, then the talkback is also very useful uh, in the control room if you want to talk to the person you are recording, or in my case, if I want to record my voice directly into my, uh, my screen capturing software, I'm going to use the talkback to do so. Um, now, the reason why I love to use the talkback within Cubase instead of using the talkback of my monitoring controller system that I have here on my desk. It has one, but it's, you know, it's a very cheap microphone that doesn't sound very good. Um, and, I, and I just love to use a microphone that sounds good um, that I can send to uh, the person I am recording. It's way more comfortable for that person to start with. And uh, I have like full control here in Cubase within the control room. I can deactivate the talkback if I want to. So this way, the person is not going to hear me talk while he is recording. Uh, now you're hearing my voice out of my camera for now and not from the QMix. I'm going to bring that back. And now the cool thing that you can do, you can actually set yourself a shortcut directly on your computer keyboard to bypass or to turn on and off the talkback. And this is very practical because, you know, using the mouse in this case is going to be like, you know, time wasting. It's... Uh, and it's not very intuitive to do so. Now to set up a shortcut, you can actually go up to edit and down to uh, key commands and then look for control room or you can just uh, type in uh, talk back and it's going to it's going to come down uh, but under control room you will have talk back on and off mine is set up to F19 on my keyboard and by clicking on it now it's bypassed and now it's on. Very, very cool, uh, very practical. Now also, something pretty nice that you can do if you have like a small controller like this one, which is a MIDI controller, you can set up one key on this one 
to uh, activate and deactivate your talkback or any other features in Cubase, which is quite nice. So mine is set up to this uh, little button right here. So very, very nice. So if you want to set that up, okay, I'm just going to show you briefly. You click on a studio on top, you go down to studio setup and uh, click on the plus sign and uh, make sure you create a generic remote. Uh, which I already have right here. So if you create one, this is probably what you are going to get, something like this. Um, I'm going to remove this one. And um, I have already one created for my Nano Control 2, which is my small MIDI controller. Uh, so what I have here, the... Um, uh, the I think it's the, the uh, solo one. This is the one that I use on my end to control the talkback. So what I did to set that up uh, was to uh, first of all to uh, to just uh, click on learn and you know assign uh, that um, that controller name to the correct button. Okay, and this is what I did. And then at the bottom here, I have solo, and this is where I'm going to get that command. Um, so I'm gonna, I clicked on, uh, on device, which is uh, going to bring me uh, those uh, options, and I clicked on command. And this is going to give me access to all the commands that I have available on Cubase. So that's why I'm saying you can uh, you set a controller button to any commands you have on Cubase, even macros. It's pretty powerful. Uh, so then I went into uh, the control room channel like we, like we just seen. And uh, I just selected the talkback on and off. And that's it. And something that you need to pay attention to is uh, uh, right here under flags, you have to make sure that receive is selected. Okay. So this way you'll be able to, um, to click on that command. It's going to be received by uh, the controller itself. So this is how I was able to set up that small button of my controller to control the talkback. Now, another reason why I love to use the control room is to uh, work with the listen option that we find right here on every channel. That is the little L here that a lot of people ask me about. So this is going to allow me to monitor the signal from that channel only without anything else. So it's very useful for or, um, to monitor like an effects channel track. And this is mainly how I use it. So basically, if I want to solo this uh, reverb, I have that reverb on the lead vocal. If I solo it, I'm going to hear the reverb and also the direct signal that is feeding that reverb. Walking in the way, many saints have gone before. Okay, so um, instead I want to hear only the effect of that channel, which is the reverb. So I'm going to click on listen. So to set that up, what I did in the control room is I activated the, uh, uh, the listen for output to start with, and then I set the uh, listen mode to after fader listen mode and then uh, the uh, the level the listen level is at unity point and I brought down the listen dim way down okay because you could actually um, just dim the signal if you want to without removing the entire thing you know so if I bring that uh, mid to midpoint this is how it is gonna sound like but I brought it way down so I can only monitor the effect of this effect channel track. Very useful in mixing. So this is another tool that I love to use that is part of the control room. All right, my friend, this is gonna be it for today. Now, I didn't cover everything related to the control room in this video, but now you know how I use it on my side. Leave me your questions and comments down below and I would love to know if you're using the control room, how do you use it on your side? Leave your comments down below. All right, my friends, until next time, take care, stay safe, and see you soon.